Hello, everyone. Today we have. Okay. Hello, everyone. Today we have Mrs. Helner, Mrs. Beerman, Mr. Fields, and Miss Breaker here to present to the class of 2022. So, rising juniors. This is a presentation on junior year and providing that information to you guys. So what we're going to do is go over some information that is very important and that you need to know about being a junior. Um, thank you all for viewing this presentation. We do apologize for the technical difficulties and interruption during the last or rather the initial presentation. Um, please also know that you and your families, um, we hope that you and your families are well and safe during this time. So the first thing we're gonna discuss is graduation requirements. And on the screen, you will see the core, the subject areas and the number of credits that are needed. So you need a total of 28 credits to graduate from high school. And that includes four credits of English, math, and social studies each, three credits of science, one health and PE, and then 12 electives or other core um, or other content focused area classes. So that could be a combination of any. So there could be a combination where there are two classes that are either CCE, arts, or second language. Um, there can be four content focus, which is highly recommended. So you have four CTE classes or four arts classes for second languages. Um, we don't offer ROTC at Granville Central, but um, that's just an example. And then the remaining six would be anything that you feel like you want to take. So that would be a total of 28 credits that you need for graduation. Um, we're going to talk about career and college readiness graduate, CCRG. Now, CCRG will be, the information will be presented by Mrs. Beerman. It, it's a new legislation that was set to begin um, this coming school year. However, it has been since postponed. Now, although it's postponed for the coming school year, that does not mean that they will not implement it the year that you become a senior. Um, so we want to make sure that you still get that information. Ms. Beerman? Okay, so um, when it comes to CCRG, basically this legislation came about because um, community colleges were finding that more and more students who were coming to them um, straight after graduating from high school did not have the skills and the knowledge that is necessary to be successful in college level courses. Um, so in the instances where that happened, um, students take a test and if they don't reach a certain threshold on the test, they are required to start out in remedial classes, um, which may or may not be covered by financial aid, like you get behind, it's really not a good situation if you have to start in these remedial classes. So to try to remedy um, this problem, the legislation was passed so that students who have a certain GPA, um, you can see it on the screen between 2.2 and 2.799. So basically if you have a 2.8, um, you will be exempt, but anywhere between 2.2 and 2.8, um, you will be expected to complete the CCRG mock CCRG modules. So the um, so this is kind of the target group for students who tend to fall into this category of go on to community college, but maybe are not as prepared as they need to be. So to alleviate this problem, um, the community college has is going to give high schools access to these modules that students normally take in these um, these what are, um, remedial classes. So the English, we are planning to just integrate into English 4 that all seniors have to take anyway. The math will probably be a separate math course. Um, and as you can see, it will not unfortunately be counted as a fourth level math. You will get a credit and it will be a math credit, right, Miss um, Breaker? 
Yes, it is a math credit. It is a fourth math credit to graduate from high school, but it does not count as a fourth level math um, when it comes to being admitted into the UNC system schools. Right. So it's a little bit of a complicated issue. So if anyone has questions, um, feel free to send me an email. But um, basically, yeah, and we were looking at starting this this school year and beginning to have preliminary conversations about how we were going to implement it, what it was going to look like. And then after COVID-19 hit, um, I think the state had mercy on us and decided to um, postpone it. Probably, but we're guessing it's only going to be a year. So um, it will fall into, um, we fully expect that this class will um, will have the CCRD their senior year. Right. And again, like she said, the exemptions, um, there are those great, those GPA exemptions, but there are also other exemptions. So students who follow the occupational course of study pathway, they are exempted from CCRG. And then any student who is eligible for CCP college transfer pathway, um, those students will also be exempted. And anyone who, um, you know, as you see the, the test scores, um, if you if you achieve these test scores, then that exempts you as well. Um, so here are some more exemptions as far as like, if you take an AP level course, we are not an IB school um, and the international piece does not um, speak to us. But if you do take AP courses and score three or higher again, you become exempted from this. So now um, we're going to discuss AP testing. Mrs. Helner, will you be able to chime in on this? Yes, I will. Okay. Um, so AP um, testing happens in May. Um, if you are taking an AP class, you have the option to take the AP exam. Um, taking the AP exam is recommended. Because currently schools in the UNC system now accept either a three, a four, or a five for full credit for the um, AP course that you are enrolled in. Um, we strongly encourage students who are taking AP exams to take, I mean, taking AP course to take the AP exam. Um, there is no cost for taking the AP exam. It's usually done during a school day, so it's not on a weekend. Um, and um, there's really no disadvantage to actually at least trying the AP exam if you're taking an AP class. Okay. And just pay attention to what you see on the screen. Remember, if you sign up for the test and you do not take it, there will be a fee because essentially we're, we're paying for the exam for you. So if you sign up for the exam, you need to make sure that you take it. Um, and if you do not, you will be assessed a fee. Um, Students who choose to take the exam, it's it happens during the school day, so you don't have to go anywhere special or do anything extra um, that will be arranged for you. And like Mrs. Helner said, school UNC system schools now accept a three, four, or five. Um, so we do strongly encourage you to take the AP exam or any AP course in which you enroll. Like it, it can't hurt you. Um, CFNC. Um, so every student at this point should have a CFNC account. And if you do not, you are encouraged to please create one. If you are unsure if you have an account, please do not create a duplicate or do not just go and create an account. You can check with um, any counselor and we can look up your account. We can reset your password if you already have an account established. So please do not, um, create a whole new account if you if you aren't sure if you already have one. Um, but CFNC is the College Foundation of North Carolina. And essentially, this is like a great gateway to getting information about applying to college, planning for college, planning for a career, um, paying for college. Did I did say that already, probably. Um, applying for college. These are all gateways to that. Um, and 
you will notice the different um, tabs. And so it's very self-directed. It's very easy to follow. And again, if you're not really sure, you can always check with a counselor um, to help you along the way with that. But you all should definitely be um, creating or have created your CFNC account. So we just want to make sure that you have done that if you have not already. Post-secondary options. Mrs. Beerman, can you chime in? Yes, I can speak to that a little bit. Um, so we kind of have the three major categories up here. Um, I think by far the most common for our students would be um, college university. Um, we actually have quite a few students who um, go on to community college. A lot of students opt for um, an associate's degree, which is a community college, usually a two-year degree. Um, but we also have a lot of students who do college transfer um, and go to a community college for two years and then go to a four-year school. Um, Vance Granville's community, I mean, college transfer program um, is very good. And um, a lot of our students um, end up going that route. But um, there are also junior colleges such as, um, oh, shoot, Miss Breaker. What is the one near us? Lewisburg. Um, that's, I believe that's the only one in North Carolina. Um, trade schools where students learn things like truck driving or um, places like Aveda that teach cosmetology. Those tend to be your trade schools, which are also perfectly good options, especially for students who um, know they want to do something more hands-on and maybe are not big into the academic work and stuff that goes along with attending a four-year college. Um, although, again, a lot of students do um, opt to go to a four-year college or university. Um, some students will, you know, go straight from high school into a full-time job. Um, some students will work full-time or work part-time and also go to school at a trade school or community college. Also very viable option, especially for students who, um, you know, who come from a household that may not have the money to pay for um, a four-year college, which we all know is can be very expensive. Um, and I feel like a growing number of our students are choosing the military option. And I just wanted to put out there that if a student does choose that option, it doesn't mean they can't go to college. Um, as a matter of fact, a lot of the um, branches provide um, the, the GI Bill ways for students to be in the military and go to college at the same time. And um, a lot of the time, the military you know, pretty much pays for a student's um, undergraduate degree. And again, that can be an excellent option for students that come from um, the more underprivileged households. So um, these are, you know, kind of the areas that we look at when we're trying to help students do post-secondary planning. And, and you want to make sure that you determine which branch and option are for you. Um, and so talk with more than one branch um, to make that determination. We have, we host the military fair each school year. Um, so make sure that you, you know, stop by that. Um, it's held during the school day. Um, so we will announce when the military fair will be held. Um, so you should definitely stop by to get more information if you think you may be interested in joining a branch of the military. Um, you want to make sure that you take the ASVAB but I believe all seniors take the ASVAB, correct? Yes, we offer the ASVAB on um, assessment day when other grade levels are taking other tests. Um, so every senior will take the ASVAB on assessment day, but if for some reason you are absent or um, you know, for some reason you do not take it that day, um, I can definitely put you in touch with a recruiter who will be more than happy to give you that. <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so just make sure, like she said, talk with the recruiter to determine your best options. They will be more than happy to speak with you. And as she, as Ms. Beaver said, you can go to college and be in the military at the same time. So see what money is available for tuition. If you are planning to go straight into the workforce, um, it's important that you definitely have a plan in place to abstain to steady employment. We do host resume um, writing workshops 
um, in the fall and the spring. So all school year, we offer those to assist you. Um, be sure you sign up for those. Um, it, they're usually held during lunchtime. So it's like a lunch and learn situation where you're, you're working, but you're eating lunch at the same time. Um, you want to also consider taking a business class. So all the registration is over now. Um, your senior year, if you haven't taken any of those business classes, like Microsoft Word, Excel, um, Principles of Business and Finance, you want to take those classes, especially the Microsoft um, classes, because they offer certifications that will that can be added to your resume. You know, providing you pass the, the exam, the certification test. Um, remember, you can work part time while attending community college or trade school. So you just want to weigh your options to see which is best for you. Um, some colleges and universities have minimum entrance requirements, um, including the ACT or SAT scores. I know that some schools have already kind of, because of COVID-19, they've kind of relaxed their um, exam scores. Um, and we don't know how long that will be. We know it's certain for next school year, but we don't know if that will extend to when you guys are applying to colleges and universities. So you certainly want to keep that in mind and stay um, informed about those types of decisions. Um, Ms. Breaker, should we say something about the career management course? Yes. So yes, thank, thank you. Um, Career, we brought back career management this school year, which is great. Um, and it's certainly a course that if you are unsure about what you want to do, then it is highly recommended that you sign up for career management um, the next go around because clearly registration has ended. But you definitely want to look into that, um, that particular course. So we're going to talk about getting into college. Um, Mr. Fields, could you um, talk about those things that matter? right now, or at least as a junior with students um, getting into college? Yeah, um, as while students being a junior, the primary focus that they should have is uh, re achieving the highest possible scores on the ACT or SAT. That is one of the things that you do not want to have to worry about in your senior year. Um, and having a good score uh, can pretty much secure uh, your ability to get in, in most um, public universities um, in North Carolina. So the prim my primary focus, if I was a junior right now, is just to focus on how I can improve my SAT or ACT scores. Definitely. And just piggybacking on what Mr. Phil said, um, as juniors, you guys took, well, not you didn't take, you will take the ACT the spring of your junior year you get to take the ACT for free. So when Mr. Phil says to make sure you get that best possible score that you can get, you definitely want to um, take advantage of all the ACT prep opportunities. For example, ACT prep class that um, we'll have. Um, you want to kind of make sure you take advantage of those opportunities because to retake the ACT is another 50 something dollars um, when the state is paying for it for you and your parents don't have to pay for it at all, you want to take that test um, serious. And I know that this year there were some incentives in place for um, students attending ACT prep sessions, students, um, if this particular class does better than the previous class, um, Ms. Allen has um, had some incentives in, uh, aligned in line for them. So you guys want to kind of make sure that you are taking the ACT score the ACT test is serious that you can get the best possible score. Um, if you're not planning to attend college, but you're planning to, you know, go straight into the workforce, you want to explore your, explore your career options. Um, and that's when that you go back to that CFNC, um, where you can do career, career interest inventories. Um, just reach out to your school counselor. Um, in that case, it'll be me. Um, but it can be any counselor for that matter. Um, we're all available to help you. Um, I'm not stingy when it comes to my students. I don't mind sharing you guys. So if I'm not available and Mrs. Beerman is or Mr. Harris is available, you know, say, hey, I really want to do a career interest inventory. Um, could you, you know, help me with that? Um, so you want to explore those career options. If you do know that you want to go to college again, your junior year GPA is the one that shows up on your transcript when you are applying to colleges, particularly in the fall. Um, if you don't apply until the spring, 
then there's a chance they will get to see your fall GPA. Um, but usually when you're applying to college, it's typically in the fall and the GPA they see is the GPA of your junior year. So they're going to see everything from freshman year up until junior year. So you want to um, make sure that um, your course load and your transcript progression um, speak well for you um, and show you in the best light possible. Playing sports in college, NCAA eligibility. Mrs. Beerman? Yes, I can speak to that for just a little bit. Um, some of you, especially parents, may know it as the NCAA Clearinghouse. Um, that was kind of the old terminology. It's now called the NCAA Eligibility Center. Um, so if you are a student and you plan to play a sport in college, you will need to go to the website and fill out all the information. Um, it's really not complicated. It does take a while because I feel like... Um, they kind of cycle through a lot of questions, especially if you play more than one sport. And there's a lot of questions that I feel like are not going to be pertinent for the vast majority of students. Um, it's going to ask you questions about have you ever been paid to advertise or, you know, for a sport or, or whatever. Um, and for the vast majority of students, the answer to that is going to be no. But um there is the fee, um, but if your student is on free reduced lunch, I can provide a fee waiver. Um, and if your student, you know, would feel more comfortable sitting down with um, sitting down with me and um, working through the entire thing, I can certainly do that. I've done that with um, many students. Um, so just so you know, if you are planning on um, playing a sport in college, it is something that will have to be done sometime during your senior year. Okay. Thank you. So to-do list between now and the end of first semester junior year. So here's a list of things that you should be doing. Um, I'm not going to read to you, um, but the things that stand out, um, make sure you meet with the counselor um, or Mr. Fields while we have him because this is his last year with us. Um, download a free ACT study guide, and there's the website where you can do that. Um, you want it's never too early to start researching programs or schools. Um, go on those college tours once they are become available. But the very bottom one is what I really want to make sure that I stress at all times. If you plan to go to college, please, please, please complete scholarship applications. There is never a time when you should not be completing scholarship applications. We also have a scholarship search um, work session during lunch throughout the school year. Um, so we will offer that again. Um, that was very successful this school year. So we're certainly gonna offer it again. But one scholarship that any student, regardless of GPA, income, residency, citizenship, anything, regardless of any circumstance, you may apply to the College Board Opportunity Scholarship because it has no stipulations except that you must be a student at a United States high school. Well, Granville Central High School is within the United States and you are a student. So therefore you qualify. Um, the link is cb.org slash backslash opportunity. And that will take you to the College Board um, website where you can sign up and begin that process. Now, the College Board Opportunity Scholarship, oh, I spelled opportunity wrong. The College Board Opportunity Scholarship um, for juniors be, opens up in December. So, December 2020 is when you begin up doing the um, application process for this scholarship. Now, this scholarship is set up in six steps. And for every step that you complete, you become eligible for a scholarship. So they give out six individual scholarships and then they give out one big one for $40,000. Um, and so in doing that, you set yourself up for an opportunity to get more money, more scholarship money. Um, 
And it ranges from between $500 to I believe $2,000 for the individual ones. And then the big one I know is $40,000. Questions. If you find you have any questions from this presentation, please reach out um, to me. My email address is B-R-E-A-K-E-R, A -E 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 as in Angela, T as in Tom, at gcs.k12.nc.us. So that's Breaker AT at gcs, as in Granville County Schools, dot K12, dot NC, as in North Carolina, dot US. Breaker AT at gcs.k12.nc.us. Um, if you have any other questions, you know you can reach out to any of the other counselors, um, but certainly reach out to me as your school counselor um, with any questions about any portion of this presentation. With that, um, that is the end of this presentation. And so if you have any questions, like I said, I told you how to reach us. And thank you all for viewing.